Uh, hello. Um, this is just a very short, it's not really a tutorial I think, it's just like a tiny little um, making of and just maybe give you a few pointers. Uh, I posted this bit of art on my Instagram account uh, a few days ago and someone asked um, specifically about the clouds and the landscape. The, the clouds the clouds are kind of what you might expect them to be, they're a volume shaded uh, kind of effect, but the landscape was done slightly differently. It was actually uh, an ocean simulation, frozen in time, and um, instead of shading the ocean as if it were an ocean, I shaded it like a desert, uh, just because <laughs> because I wanted to see what it looked like. Uh, but someone asked, you know, um, how did I do both? So I'm just going to sort of show you briefly. Again, it's nothing. This isn't an in-depth thing. I'm not going to step by step walk through it. I'm just going to sort of uh, briefly show it. Uh, so uh, first of all, we'll start with the well, they're about equal difficulty. Neither are very difficult, to be honest. So this is the uh, this was done in Maya, and it uses the BOSS spectral wave simulation, which is actually a pretty awesome uh, sort of ocean surface simulator. It's very easy to use as well. Uh, I did the day after. I did. Um, I actually used it for what it was meant to be used, <laughs> and um, did a kind of large-ish kind of ocean kind of surface. Uh, and you know, it was super easy to set up and um, pretty easy to render as well. That's just if you've never used it before. It really is as simple as. You apply it to a polygonal object. Um, it's a simulation, but it, it's not a simulation in the fact that it requires you to only ever play things forwards. Uh, you can play it forward and backwards, so I guess it's probably not really a simulation. It's probably more of a procedural kind of effect. Um, let's uh, actually make this 20 by 20. And let's do um, 150 by 150. So obviously the more dense you have the mesh, the more detail you're going to get. So you have your plane. You don't have to apply it to a plane. You can apply it to any polygonal object. Um, I applied mine to a plane. Uh, go to FX and up here you see BOSS. And there's only one thing and it's the BOSS editor. So if we click that this little dialog pops up and it is as simple as making sure that your object selected and just hitting create spectral waves. Uh, right and when you do that it's going to look like nothing's happened. That's because it starts on frame two. So there we are for frame two. And if you play it, you actually see it move. And there's lots of different things you can do to make this look more realistic. Uh, at the, it, by default, it has horizontal displacement off. Clicking that on will create slightly more realistic um, settings. Now, I mean, for the, for the desert, I wasn't really worried about getting an accurate simulation at all of uh, an ocean so I'm not going to really go through anything just here there are there's actually a really decent tutorial from the my learning channel about uh, spectral waves I really highly recommend you watch that if you're interested in more detail uh, and they advise actually against using this parameter here uh, wave height because it's kind of like an artificial parameter um, if you want to get proper bigger waves it's better to change the wind speed the fetch distance the ocean depth and the wave size as opposed to wave height. Just using wave height on its own just sort of does that. But as you can see, it kind of begins to look a little bit like a noisy procedural kind of landscape. Um, what's quite nice is this is its own separate object. It's hidden your original plane object, but the connection is still there. So you can go in here and you can increase your um, subdivisions of the original plane and um, you'll get get a higher resolution plane here. I think that worked. Let's just check whether that worked or not. Let's lower it down significantly. That'll test it. Yeah, it did. Look at that. In fact, I would just, I mean, there you get some really odd, cool looking results. This is what I was messing around with the ocean surface, meaning to do an ocean, and it just suddenly occurred to me as I was playing around with it, you can get some odd looking landscapes going on here. They don't look like proper landscapes, something out of Houdini or Easy Landscape Creator or world creator or anything like that, but you can get strange uh, Bob Ross style happy accidents. So yeah, that was how I did the uh, landscape. So you just play around, just tweak the settings, literally just play. There's, there's no secret to it like that. Uh, and then just shade it differently. Um, although I did do, I did shade it in one, maybe. I didn't bring it into Substance Painter. So I did do one slightly fancy thing. I don't think it's that fancy, um, but I'll show you. Uh, I used the snow, my snow shader to help with this. Uh, let's just create 
um, sun and sky, so it actually renders. Uh, and let's just apply uh, standard surface. And so if we render it at the moment, it's going to, oh, excuse that, I'm just playing around trying to get like a sort of um, ocean, not ocean, sorry, like a sort of pond, green pond kind of look. So there we are, the standard surface, and obviously we can change the color here. Um, and if you're doing a sandy, red sandy kind of thing, I would obviously increase roughness a reasonable amount, play around with diffuse roughness as well. Probably bring this down in value. Maybe a bit of saturation. Anyway, play around like this. But I used um, the snow material as well to vary it based on the angle of the faces. It's like a very, very primitive landscape procedural texturing tool. It's again, it's nowhere near as um, sophisticated as uh, something like Houdini or World Creator could output for you. Uh, so, but I'll show you how it works anyway. Um, AI standard surface, uh, and we're just going to type snow. And all this does is if we put the output into, well, you can you can use this in two ways. You can either use it going into base color, or you could have two entirely separate uh, surface shaders, Arnold surface shaders, and combine them that way. But if we put it into here, we've got two options. Uh, we've got snow color and surface color, and we've got threshold, uh, decay, and thickness. Um, so that's what it looks like at the moment now. So you can see it puts the red color on more sort of vertical sloping angles and it deposits the snow on more sort of horizontal facing up angles and you can you know you can play around with this threshold to control how that kind of works change the thickness so it's really it's basic stuff um, but I did a little bit of that I just varied um, I just had two surface Arnold surfaces uh, that were slightly different ready orange colors and slightly different roughnesses, just so I could get sort of like the feeling that maybe there was sand actually blowing onto slightly shinier, rocky kind of material. Um, but you know, it's easy, and I'm always going for the easy option because um, I'm impatient. I want to get a nice image, so and I knew I was going to do a fair bit in Photoshop afterwards. All right, so that's the landscape. Let's just quickly talk about the clouds. Um, right, so the clouds. Uh, let's go back to it again. So there's no photos here. This is all um, uh, this is all from the render. Color correction going on, but that's about it. Uh, and it uses the Arnold volume shader, standard volume. But it also uses another Maya uh, inbuilt native Maya procedural called Clouds. So it's just if you've never used it before, there are a couple of things that might catch you out. Uh, so. It's applied to a sphere that I scaled up and then I flattened a bit. So it kind of looks like that. This is gonna be your volume container. Clouds are gonna be in here. Uh, you won't be able to fill this though with anything volumetric unless you go into the attribute editor, go into the shape of the object, go down to Arnold and go down to volume attributes. And you've gotta give this step size um, a non-negative, a non-zero number, I should say. 0.1 um, is good to start off with. The smaller that number, the more um, potential detail you'll get in your volume, but obviously at increased render cost. And the render cost is heavy with this, so be aware of that. Uh, so we've done that. Step size here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is, yeah, give it, um, just give it, to begin with, just give it, give it a, a standard surface. I'm going to kind of get rid of this. It's just really to create a container. Go into the hypershade and don't accidentally dock it like I've done. And uh, two, one, so it's going to be two. It's going to be this one. So actually, um, you can get rid of this straight away if you want. And type tab and just type volume. And what you want is AI standard volume. This plugs into the volume shader of the shading group here. And that's all you have to do initially. Let's just see what happens when we put that in. Uh, I've got like a sun and sky system going on at the moment. So uh, at the moment, it's just going to look like that. So in some ways, it almost looks like a 
this looks like a UFO, doesn't it? Um, um, it almost looks like it's just a grey shaded uh, sphere, but it's actually a volume. Excuse me, just drinking a bit of coffee. You can control the density of it by lowering this. So now it begins, you know, now it looks like a single um, perfectly ellipsoid uh, cloud. So density controls how dense it is. Um, scatter controls the colour of it, um, or the colours that it scatters anyway, uh, which is a little bit different. You can use that to sort of tint the effect, but also control how glowy it kind of is as well, because it scatters more light, um, like clouds do. Clouds will scatter a lot of light. Um, this number would have to be quite high, so I think I put this up to about, well, I think I put it pretty much up to white with a maximum value. And uh, you, can, you can do emission because you can also use the standard volume to do explosions and stuff, but I, I'll skip that. Now, um, where it gets plugged in, uh, where the cloud get, effect gets plugged in, is the transparency just here. Uh, you could probably put it in the density as well, but um, I'm putting it in the transparency. <laughs> so click the little um, icon there, and we're looking for cloud just here. So now when we click this, now it's kind of eroded away and eaten away at your cloud, at your kind of cloud container. Um, now you can put some values in here and this, just play around with it. I found these values to be reasonably good. Um, so let's put these in. I just noted these down earlier. Um, it's depth of eight, won't change that. Edge threshold, this is quite cool. This controls, you know, how close to the edge um, you know, how edgy, how sharp your kind of clouds might be. Um, center threshold, we we'll leave that at the same. Transparency range, let's lower this to point, sorry, 0.188. And um, ratio, let's put that to 8. You can sort of see now it's kind of eating away at it. Um, if you've got like, was it triophobia? Um, apologies. Uh, now, the way you control the size of the clouds is because the cloud. My cloud is a 3D uh, procedure. We've got a little helper here, a place 3D texture. So we can scale this up like this, and this gradually our clouds get bigger. That's kind of what we want. And then when you get close to this thing, it kind of fills, fills the frame. You know, it begins to. Um, begins to look like clouds. So you can see the, the, the threshold here, the, where it kind of, um, the edges of the sphere. Well, my one, I just, I had, my, you know, this was hidden by the fact that my landscape went over the top of this. But you can see it's beginning to look quite nice. You know, you get some clouds going on and it's really easy. You can do clouds other ways with um, Maya and Arnold. You can also, you can do a full um, 3D fluid simulation. But again, you know, when you probably get maybe slightly more realistic look. Sorry, another gulp of coffee. Um, uh, you'd probably get a more realistic look, but you'd, you'd be more set up time and you'd have to literally simulate it. And um, again, I couldn't really be bothered. Uh, so just play around with the size of the 3D texture whole, uh, placement and just the settings on the actual cloud shader. Um, maybe go into, then go back into your um, volume here and then you could maybe begin to lower the density. And the clouds will become sort of softer and wispier. Now, there's one more thing that, though, is really important. Um, and uh, it is going to be a, a nasty on your render times. Is at the moment, uh, the default Maya, uh, default Arnold ray depth for volumes, I think, might be zero or one. Uh, essentially, uh, the ray of light hits the volume uh, and bounces, and maybe hits one more thing and then stops, or it might even if I remember correctly, ray depth down here. Oh, it's even worse, it's zero. Okay, so it's only getting direct light. There's no um, global illumination happening. And if you leave it, I mean, it looks all right. It looks like maybe sort of thicker, um, more ominous looking clouds in some ways. Maybe more like smoke, it's more opaque. To get it looking more cloudy, I'll stop that. You have to increase this volume ray depth. And this is going to, it's adding any kind of volume increases your render time, but this is really going to hit your render time. And uh, you, in some ways, you want this volume rate up to be relatively high. Let's put it at six. So now the light can enter the volume and it can bounce and scatter around six times before dying out. 
and you'll see how significantly brighter the clouds get. Look at that, big time extra brightness. But if you want uh, clouds that look really sort of translucent, like the light, has, um, the sunlight's hit them and it bounced and scattered around inside them, you have to increase that ray depth, if you want to do it all in the render anyway. Uh, all of these dappled shadows obviously I get for free. This is just the, just the fact that the light is shining through the clouds and hitting the, um, the landscape. But this is an absolute render killer. So um, if you want this effect in real time, <laughs> maybe don't use Arnold and Maya. Maybe get something like Octane, something like that. But you can still get nice results as long as you're okay with waiting for a bit. Um, and in my physical sky shader, I just kind of did things like um, increase the turbidity to sort of give a slightly more um, polluted atmosphere look, a bit hazier look, lower the elevation so it's a bit more sunsetty. Uh, let's put it maybe down to 15. And then sort of artificially, I think I boosted the intensity of the sun quite a lot. Kind of like that. Um, and that, that's about it. Um, maybe the only other thing I can think of that I did that um, might catch you out is I, I might I won't increase this too much because I much prefer artistically not artificially boosting lights. I prefer playing around with the exposure of a camera, um, the camera in in Arnold. Um, I just find if I'm I'm trying to go for things that look a bit filmic, and uh, of you know yeah on on a set obviously the camera operator the director of photography can obviously pump more light into the scene by having um, by literally sticking more lights in there but sometimes they're um, they're restricted to however bright the um, the uh, the sky is by the sun is so I so they'll have to compensate with their uh, camera settings by changing the uh, aperture or the f-stop or uh, you know switching to higher film speed or something like that just I prefer doing that rather than necessarily putting a ton of extra lights in that are much brighter than they can sort of realistically be so to speak and yeah you can see that but look at this it's really nice i mean it's still rendering you can see how it catches it scatters all that light around and the new uh, physical sky shader in arnold in my 2020 actually puts a, a sort of fake ground plane in as well so it's not like it used to be in 2019 and and lower where it's just black so we're getting the light bouncing back up onto there and you get really really nice realistic pretty looking clouds anyway that's it went on a little bit longer than i expected and anticipated i hope this helps some people uh, cheerio. Bye-bye.